Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to problem three from Lee Code Contest 74 entitled Number of Subarrays with Bounded Maximum. So the problem states we are given an array of positive integers and two positive integers L and R, L being less than or equal to R. And the question asks us to return the number of contiguous non-empty subarrays such that the value of the maximum array element in that subarray is at least L, but at most R. And note that L, R, and the values of A will be integers in the range 0 to 10 to the 9, and the length of A will be at most 50,000, which is 5 times 10 to the 5th. So let's take a look at an example. So here we have L equal to 2, R equal to 4, and an array uh, with the values 0, 3, 1, 5, 1, and 2. And so what the question is asking us is how many subarrays are there that have a maximum value in the subarray between L and R inclusive. Um, so if we take a look at those subarrays, it looks like the following. So you can see for the first three elements, you're able to generate four possible uh, subarrays where the maximum element is uh, between two and four. So you can see that zero and one by themselves don't uh, constitute subarrays uh, that meet this requirement, but any subarray uh, containing that three in the first three elements will give you a subarray that meets that criteria. However, when we move to the five, because five is greater than our maximum value, uh, our, our maximum bound for the maximum value in our subarray, we're not going to have any subarrays including this number. Um, and then when we move to our final two, once again, the one by itself uh, isn't going to meet the requirements because it's less than our lower bound. Uh, but once we have two, that meets the lower bound and is less than the upper bound. So we'll have two subarrays uh, in our last two elements. So that in total will give us a result of six possible subarrays. And so the way we can think about trying to get towards this solution is that there are three possible types of values in our array. And so I like to think of those values as reset values, the needed values, and OK values. So if we highlight our array uh, based on these three, we end up with the following. So reset values are the easiest. Those are just the ones that are greater than our maximum bound for our maximum value in our subarray. Uh, needed values are uh, the blue uh, values in which we need at least one of these uh, values in order to have our maximum uh, value in our subarray to be greater than the lower bound. And OK values are, you can take it or leave it, it doesn't matter if it's contained, um, but you, you definitely need the needed values. And so what we're going to end up doing is uh, iterating through our array and keeping track of sort of a, a start and end uh, element and using those we're going to be able to generate the maximum number so before we do that let's take a look at a little bit uh, of a more complicated example and that's just taking the same example and adding another needed value and another okay value and this will start to inform how we think about this algorithm a little bit more how we think about this problem a little bit more so when we we hit this two uh, we're going to need to increase the number of subarrays. Um, but at this point, we sort of have a, a prefix here, possible prefixes of 0 and 0 and 3. So uh, that gives us uh, these two subarrays right here. And then when, when we move to the 1, we're just doubling the count of that prefix for an OK value. But when we move to another needed value, we're then going to have a possible four prefixes. We can have 0 to 2, 3 to 2, 1 to 2, and 2, which will look like the following. Uh, and then when we move uh, one more to an OK value, we're still going to have the same possible number of prefixes. We're just going to extend the length by 1. So it's this length of this sort of prefix between our start and end values that really motivates how we're going to count the possible number of subarrays. And so uh, the answer to this problem will be uh, 6 plus 4 plus 4, which is going to be 14. So let's now walk through how we're actually going to set the values of start and end based on these three different types of values and how that will get us our final result. So here we have our result initialized to 0 and start and end uh, are initialized to negative 1. And we're then going to start by iterating through the loop and uh, checking uh, what value we're looking at and doing something accordingly. So at the beginning, whenever we check an OK value, uh, we don't need to do anything. And after every single, we process every single element, we are going to add to the result end minus start, which is sort of the length of that prefix that I was talking about. But because we're not doing anything for the OK value, we're just going to be adding negative 1 uh, 
minus negative one, which is just gonna be zero. So then we'll move to three. So for needed values, we're always going to reset end to the current index, which is one at the moment. So we set end to one, and now for the same thing, uh, we add uh, a, do a plus equals to result of end minus start, which is gonna be two at this point. And so that keeps track of now the two subarrays that are zero, three, and three. Uh, and so now we'll move to the next element. Once again, this is an OK value, so we don't need to adjust end or start for our OK values. We just do the same plus equals. So now this is taking care of the subarrays 0, 3, 1, and 3, 1. So uh, the prefixes 0 and 3 and 3 are used again. Now we move to our next value, which is a needed value. And at this point, we are going to once again reset end to our current index, which is going to be 3. We then do the same plus equals. But at this point now, we're going to be adding uh, 4 because 3 minus uh, negative 1 equals 4. So we end up with 8. And this is adding the 0, 3, 1, 2, which is a subarray, then the 3, 1, 2, which is another subarray, the 1, 2, and then the 2. Uh, so you can see now, because our prefix has been extended by the resetting of our end, we're adding more subarrays. Uh, and so we move to our next value, which is an OK value. So we're just going to do a plus equals like we did before, because at this point, we're just extending those subarrays that we just uh, calculated at our, our last element. So this will go from 8 to 12. And uh, then when we move to 5, we're going to reset everything. So end and start both get set to the current index. So they're going to both jump to 5. And then we continue doing this one, we add nothing at this point, then we get to two, we're gonna shift end and we're gonna add uh, seven minus five, which is gonna give us 14. So this is how uh, our algorithm works. So let's take a look at the code. So here we have a function num subarray bounded max that takes as two parameters a vector of integers, which are the values of our array, and two integers l and r, which set the bounds for our maximum element. And at the top here, I have an enumerator defined uh, to sort of make it really clear what we're doing with our cases. I wouldn't recommend actually writing this during a contest for the purposes of speed, um, but here it's just supposed to be uh, for clarity's sake. So at the top, we're going to initialize our results, which is what we're going to return from this function, and our start and end integers, both the negative 1, result gets initialized to 0. Then we enter our for loop. So at the top, we're going to set the type, the value type of our current element, uh, and it's either, if it's greater than our upper bound r, we're going to set it as a reset value. If that fails, then we're going to check if it's greater than or equal to l, in which case it will be a needed value, otherwise it's an okay value. And then based on the value type, we're going to do exactly what we saw in our uh, visual example. So for reset values, we set them to the current index for the needed at value. We just set it, uh, the end to the current index, and for okay, we do nothing. And then for every single element, after we've uh, done these uh, modifications, modifications to start and end, we will do a plus equals to result uh, from the difference of end and start. So this is a very, very involved uh, you know, piece of code, but you'll notice that end equals i is actually the same for both reset and uh, needed. So we can simplify this code to look like follows. So sort of collapse these case statements and then move that plus equals into a default and note that there's no breaks here. So everything flows through. So you're, you're doing everything uh, below for the one above. Uh, so reset's going to do everything, end's going to do everything from end down, and so on and so forth. Um, and so this will get your solution. I uh, still wouldn't recommend writing this, so you might want to uh, write something a little bit closer to this. This is only a uh, six-line solution and uh, can be coded much quicker, but it does the exact same thing. And uh, finally, uh, the time complexity for this algorithm is going to be linear because we're only doing uh, one loop in the length of our uh, array A. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Make sure to follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start. You can find all of the code that I use in my videos on my GitHub page. All of the links are in the description down below. And finally, if you want to make sure you don't miss any of my upcoming videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.